time on Bill Boggs, and we're set for, I think, a oh, big passed yesterday. Very big decisions. going to be affecting, well, I, won't, I can't say all of our lives. It won't affect my life very much, maybe yours, maybe some of the people who are here watching us today. But the, yesterday, the State Liquor Authority uh, decided to put a statewide ban on total nudity that's topless and bottomless in places that sell liquor. It's a new thing, right? Uh, Michael Roth, who is the Liquor Authority chairman, says uh, the sale of liquor and nudity are incompatible, right? Incompatible. So what I say, what will the result of this be? I, I predict topless performers springing up in ice cream parlors, hot dog stands, places where there's no liquor. There will be no containing it, I don't think. On today's show, we will be talking at one point with Gary Knoll about sex and food. And we'll be looking at aphrodisiacs. Uh, is it a myth? Or are certain foods related to your sexual drive and potency and so forth? We have a debate later on about an issue that has certainly been in the news and on a lot of people's minds, including celebrities like Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, Muhammad Ali. That is a debate about Hurricane Carter. We'll talk about that. We have a special reading by Tennessee Williams and a special segment with Tennessee Williams as he reads Hart Crane. Our first guest is named Irene Wirth, and I saw her last night on stage at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, which has been refurbished and reopened and is just beautiful. And she is appearing in a highly acclaimed production of Sweet Bird of Youth uh, before coming to Brooklyn. It was at the Kennedy Center in Washington. Irene Wirth plays Princess Cosmonopolis. Now, first I'd like to say that the play itself, The Sweet Bird of Youth, is one of the great classics, one of the great surviving classics of American theater, and about the woman you're going to meet in a moment it has been written that she is one of the greatest actresses in the English-speaking world. Clive Barnes and Walter Kerr both kind of concur on this point, together with many other critics. So a lot of times we shoot down the critics, but when they say nice things, we ought to give them credit for saying something nice, I would say. I saw her performance last night, and I uh, actually woke up this morning thinking about it, because this is that absorbing a piece of material. Uh, she created life in the great tradition of the theater last night, real life on stage. And we might remember her from her Tony award-winning performance uh, with John Gilgood and Tiny Alice. She is with us for the day, a, a very special woman with a gigantic talent, uh, Miss Irene Wirth. We're happy to have her with us. Welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. What a build-up you've given me. You deserve and it. And a welcome. <laughs> well, you're welcome. And you're welcome to the build-up. Thanks very much. How do you relate to uh, the, just in terms of your, of your profession, the most wonderful things that could be said are being said about I you? I know, it's like a fairy story. And the, uh, you know, I was thinking about it uh, the other day uh, because I came over a, a year ago, more than a year ago, to do this play. And I was going to do it in Chicago, and the company uh, went bankrupt, and the whole thing was a disaster. Oh. And it was like uh, that marvelous song that Ethel Merman sings so wonderfully. There's no business like show business. Everything about it is appealing. And, and, well, no, but it's just incredible, because for one moment you can be suddenly bankrupt, and the whole thing is disaster, and then a year later it all ends in oh, bravo as a triumph. It's just fantastic. When I, I say that I woke up this morning thinking about the sweet bird of youth, and thinking about not just your performance, but the total impact, the absorption process that goes on when brilliant theater is occurring, I was thinking literally about the essence of that play, about youth, mm -hmm. about it flying away. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how you prepared for this character, the Princess Cosmonopolis. Well, it, I, I thought about the play um, a lot when I first wanted to do it about five or six years ago. And I wanted to do it in England. I wanted to do it. I was in England. I lived there. Uh, I wanted to do it, but I knew that I would have to do it in America because it has such an American for certain. Uh, style. And I, I am American, although I've lived in England for 30 years. So uh, I wanted to do the part. I wanted to do it, and I couldn't get it going. And then at last I did come to, to do it. And uh, I prepared it by studying the text. That's the only thing that you can ever, the only way you can ever learn to do anything is by studying the thing itself. What Tennessee Williams was uh, saying. What he was saying uh, about the character and what he wrote about it. And and uh, what other people said about her. But the most important thing in Tennessee Williams' plays is to uh, try to find out what he really means, because sometimes he's a, he's a very uh, remarkable man in that he uh, has a poet's vision. 
but he writes in a very forthright and sometimes almost brutal, uh, mm -hmm. vulnerable, strong way. So, but he has this incredible reserve, so that you have to find, you have to get past the reserve. Um, even his stage instructions are not always the truth. Mm. There is a certain mystery and a certain reserve that you have to get through to. Uh, they, and once you understand the mentality of the writer, uh, you then will find his style. And uh, th that takes enormous study. There will be many things I want to ask you this morning, one of which will be later on, whether or not you had to go back to that time in your life when you felt your youth receded. I've never into the felt back. it. You've never felt that? Never. So you don't identify thing, with this no, woman no, who not, sees her not youth remotely. behind No, not, not remotely. I don't reckon time. I, the only time I was ever aware of time was when I was a very young. And I thought, will I never grow up? And I can remember when I, I remember was having six that or eight and sitting uh, on my feet in the car and thinking, now people will think that I'm grown up because I'm taller. Mm -hmm. And the only time I ever had any preoccupation with age was when I was very, very young, and I thought I would never grow up. Do you remember uh, any specific moment in your life when you said, I'm grown up? That's no. it. It just... No, no, I don't. The, the, there's another time, though, that I, when I ha had to come to terms with time. Um, I started acting very late. How late? How old were you? Oh, <laughs> one moment, my Never dear. came to reckon with that, though, I don't uh -huh. think either. <laughs> and, uh, no, because uh, people get very jittery and edgy about age. Um, age is a, is a, a natural con consequence of life. And there's no point in getting hysterical about age because it, it is a process of w being born and dying. That's well, what all. about all those people right now who are wondering, Gee, I wonder how old she yes, is. Yes, uh, I mean, that they have to just wonder that because... <laughs> You're not uh, going to tell them. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's that uh, we still are not natural about living and about people allowing people just to be what they are. And there is an incredible preoccupation with the, the uh, uh, youth and an accent on youth because it is meant to be more appealing. I think it um, originally began with uh, this terrific uh, problem that some gentlemen have with the sex and um, feeling that perhaps their powers are fading a bit and uh, a young little chick will uh, restore them, them up. magically magically uh, restore uh, them. So, but the women have never been allowed to um, uh, reverse the process maybe they're getting to do that more and more we have to take a pause for a commercial okay. take a breather and we will be back right after this <laughs> Welcome back to Midday Live, and we're here today with uh, Irene Wirth, who is starring at the Brooklyn Academy of Music in the production of Tennessee Williams' Sweet Bird of Youth. Let's talk to, we're going to meet Tennessee Williams on tape in just a moment. Let's talk a little bit about how Tennessee Williams invests a great deal of himself as a playwright into female characters, yes. one of whom you're playing. He has great sympathy for women, um, and uh, I bless him for that because he writes these great tour de force roles for women. And it's marvelous as an actress to feel that you, you've got uh, a really challenging thing. How would you rank the Princess Cosmonopolis? And you've played many, many great and classic parts. Yes. I, 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 I rank her very high. Yeah. Uh, he seems to have, uh, you see, I think that on, on a surface level, she's a very um, uh, rather ra rambustious woman, ra very, uh, wild and uh, undisciplined uh, and um, mad uh, and frantic uh, because uh, she has this great genius and genius always has to pay a price. The price. Uh, but on a deeper level, I think that uh, he has considered very, very carefully the dilemma of the artist in society. Uh, society is always casting out the nonconformist because uh, they are uneasy with a nonconformist. But the nonconformist is the artist, and society cannot do without the artist. We were just talking about that yesterday on the show. We have, we have something that I hope is special for you, because as I sat across from Tennessee Williams when he read what you're about to see on tape, it was very special for me. Tennessee Williams has been greatly influenced by a man named, uh, a great poet named yes. Hart Crane. And here is Tennessee um, in a pre-recorded interview reading some Hart Crane. Let's go to that right now, and then we'll come back and talk a little more. At uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, which incidentally is a great theater. If, if you really want to have a, 
an absorbing experience in the theater. Try to try to get to the Brooklyn Academy of Music while Sweet Bird of Youth is running. You will I you couldn't be disappointed. Unless you're overly tired and you know, fall asleep or something like that. Because I uh, I'll wake him up. You will wake him up, no <laughs> question. Some of the things that are written in the play I'd like to ask you about. The Chance Wayne, who was the young man uh, that, that you are hanging with, you know, mm. on this flight from your fear of, of a movie that you've made, bombing, your comeback movie, so to speak, talks of a parade. He mm. talks of the parade through life, the parade to mm. become successful, mm. and he sees himself going here and going there. How do you feel about that parade? Well, I, 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 we started talking about that a bit earlier. This is the artist against society and the materialism of society, which places too much emphasis on success and uh, youth and beauty and all the false values. So that it, it, in a way, the artist has to turn into a kind of monkey on a, st on a string. And Tennessee talks about that very profoundly in this play. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons for her collapse, this great genius, this woman possessing this great genius, this great art, which can never die in her because her art is her, is her nature and it is one of the gifts of a mysterious gift of life that she has. I know an, an artist, a woman, an actor, who is, I don't know what she is, is 80, perhaps something. Um, and I talked to her not long ago. Uh, and she was in anguish, uh, saying, Do you think I could do this, or what could I do? Them? And I said, Darling, I don't know why you want to act anymore. You, you, you're a great actress, you're world famous. Uh, and it would be such a relief not to have to act. I would be thrilled if I could mm -hmm. not act, because I, 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 I find this parade, this competition, um, really laborious. What the artist wants to do is to, to perform, but we shouldn't have to always have to make money and do these surface material things which other people live off. You know, I uh, see this so often. Uh, but she said, I have yeah, it sorry. in me and I have got to get it out. And she said this, this is very nearly 80, and her force is not spent yet. No, that's true. And in the and look at Verdi, who went on c composing Surely. and doing his might, more and more mighty things. The older he got, the stronger he became. Toscanini at 70 said, I have to retire for a year. I want to study Beethoven. <laughs> Pablo Picasso, we were discussing just yesterday, working in, into his 92nd, mm. 92nd year. Mm. What? It's so hard. It's so hard to glean any one specific message from a, something as complex as *Sweet Bird of Youth*. Uh, but for a woman, we'll say who is at the same age in life as mm. the princess, mm. a woman who would be sitting there in the Brooklyn Academy of Music, watching this life that you're creating mm. on stage, what do you? Th what is the hope that is springing out? I didn't know. I think it must be very puzzling, and very sad, because. Uh, the average woman watching me carry on in this hysterical manner, I think they must, must think I'm mad. On the other hand, uh, it's not their dilemma. Every person has his own dilemma. Yes, it's not theirs and it shouldn't no. be seen as theirs. No, That's so right. I think they feel it with a certain pity. Mm -hmm. Another line, and, uh, excuse uh, me. Uh, sorry, um, you know an awful lot of people want to act. This is Did true. you know that? That I'm almost everybody wants I'm, to act. I'm one of them. And uh, there are uh, countless people living uh, unfulfilled lives because they would like to have been actors. Mm -hmm. Not as a profession, but they just like to act. Yes. They, and they like to play games, and they like to dress up. And uh, we do that as children. We're allowed to do it, but then when we grow up, we're not allowed to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the fantasy of the theater continues uh, within every single person because vicariously he can experience the things that he would like actually to be either living or pretending to live Is that what you're out. doing then? Are you, yes. are you fulfilling some of your very early childhood fantasies over I and suppose, over again? I suppose so. I think otherwise, why, uh, why would we be actors? There's another line in the play that I wrote down as I was watching. Chance Wayne again says, um, age is the level of rot in mm. all of us. Mm. How do you relate to that? Just as, as a That's state. Tennessee's silly. He's, he's I don't know. He, Tennessee's he, being silly there? Yeah, he's talking about guilt. Guilt? Mm. Do you think he might not be talking a little bit about erosion of talents? Because when I interviewed him, he, in the very first moments of our interview, you know, that was on a couple weeks ago, 
said, I, ha I do not have the talent that I once had. No, but he's a very modest man, and a very, as, I told, as I said earlier, he, he's a very shy and a very reserved man. You can't get right into the inside of him. He's a very vulnerable and will not expose him. Okay, can't, really. Why should he? Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I think he just has a certain sense of guilt. Um, guilt is something that we're all taught. How do you, how, do you, early age. how have you in your life learned to deal with well guilt? i've i've tried to um, expunge it because uh, there's no value you have to live your life uh, and uh, guilt only compounds the tension and uh, i think if you live honorably you that's the best you can do but uh, well, guilt doesn't doesn't no. take you anywhere <laughs> except make you feel guilty, give you that knot that you don't want to have. Of course, it gives a certain tension. It might be the little bit of grit that makes his pearls. It could be. We'll ask him about that next time All we right. see him. At any rate, we're going to take a break. Irene uh, will be staying with us. I'm going outside to meet uh, a man who drives New York's only nostalgia cab right after this, and then sex and food later. <laughs> <laughs> 